A person who is agitated by the temptations he suffers has not yet understood what temptations really are. Temptations are like a dog that bites. If you hit it, its anger increases. If you ignore it, it gets tired and goes away. Dear Faithful, In this video we will try to give you knowledge and understanding of how a Christian should deal with recurring sins. It is common during the examination of conscience to realize that you have been repeating the same sins over and over for years. We ask ourselves what to do in these cases. Some people over time become accustomed to sin, lose their sense of guilt and begin to justify their actions. Often, therefore, we tend to justify our sins as consequences of our character, attributing our anger, rudeness or laziness to something beyond our control. Others, however, become obsessed with guilt to the point that they are no longer able to live in peace. In the worst cases, you can even lose your faith stopping confessing and taking it out on God or the church, wanting your sin to be accepted as something good or normal. Before proceeding, if this topic interests you, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Let's continue. First, it is important to understand that if a person is a Christian, their heart has been regenerated, made alive, and given a new heart. The Holy Spirit lives in us. It is normal for a Christian to experience changes and transformations because the more we grow in faith, the more united we become with Jesus Christ. However, we are never completely free from sin, which accompanies us every single day of our lives. It's easy to fall into a vicious cycle of sin and shame, asking ourselves questions like, How can God forgive me? Will I ever be able to break out of this circle? This creates great tension and suffering in our inner life. On the one hand, there is the promise of holiness and our desire to live a life uncompromised with evil. On the other, there is the harsh reality of our weakness and sin. We ask ourselves, am I a child of light or am I a child of darkness? In the first letter of John, chapter 1, we read, If we say we have communion with him and walk in darkness, we are liars and do not practice the truth. It would seem then that if we commit sins, we are not true children of God. This reflection invites Christians to confront the reality of sin and the regeneration of the heart, seeking a path of redemption and understanding, to face temptations with serenity and faith. But a little further on, John himself in verse 8 writes, If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. This statement brings us back down to earth making us understand that even if we must avoid walking in darkness, those who walk in the light inevitably commit some sins. One of the characteristics of a true Christian is not the absence of sin, but the ability to recognize it in one's life and not hide it. When we recognize sin, we must confess it. We often don't realize how extraordinary this is. We live in a world that constantly sins against God, yet few people recognize their sin, take responsibility for it, confess it, and are sorry for it. A Christian is a person who sins, and if he says he is without sin, he deceives himself. A Christian will probably sin less, but he will never be without sin. So how does a Christian differ from any other person, considering that we all sin? The difference is that the Christian, when he sins, feels the pain, repents, and confesses his sin. John reassures us further in verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, when a believer sins, he should confess his sin, turn from it, and ask for forgiveness. This act of recognition and repentance is what distinguishes a true Christian who lives in awareness of sin and in the hope of divine forgiveness. But what is confession? The Greek word for confession is homology, which literally means to say the same thing. If a person is Christian and listens to the Word of God, day after day, the Lord, through His Word, will teach him how he is called to live. He will teach her that she is called to be holy and immaculate in love, and He will also show her how she is sinning and not living as a child of the light. Even a brother in Christ can help her recognize her sin, seeing that she is not walking as she should. When God speaks through His Word, or through the words of another believer, and says, You were impatient. The confession in this case occurs by answering, Lord, I agree with you about my sin. You are right, I have been impatient. 
This is confession, recognizing the truth of one's sin and consequently asking for forgiveness by saying, forgive me for my impatience. We are used to considering confession exclusively as the sacrament of penance when we go to a priest to confess our sins. And sacramental confession is truly an extraordinary sacrament because it gives healing to the soul and frees us from discouragement over the evil done, restoring the state of grace in conformity with our calling. But the first act of confession occurs in our conscience when we allow ourselves to be corrected by God and, with humility, we recognize our sins, calling what is evil evil and what is good good. This act of recognition is essential to living an authentic Christian life and walking in the light of the Lord. Confession and Repentance – The Way to Holiness Confessing a sin means taking responsibility for your own wickedness before God, without blaming others, and asking for forgiveness with humility. God's grace transforms and brings rebirth, but every Christian will always have to deal with sin in their lives. Although we hope that evil will diminish as time passes, it will always be present, and we will have to face it through confession and repentance, listening to what God says about us and confessing it. Confessing sin is no small thing, because you don't become a saint with a simple leap. Sin is always with us, and it is essential to confess it so as not to abdicate our vocation to holiness, settling into sin as if it were something normal. It doesn't have to be this way. Mediocrity must rise towards holiness, not the other way around. However, we do not always immediately have the strength and grace to convert and change our lives. Sometimes it takes time, maturation, and sometimes a lifetime to live up to our calling. For this reason, it is essential to confess our sin, to keep us oriented towards holiness, even when we do not have the strength to take steps forward. How can we grow in conformity with Christ and sin less? One of the essential things we need is the Word of God. David says in Psalm 119, verse 11, I have kept your word in my heart, that I may not sin against you. How much time do we spend in God's Word? How much time do we dedicate to listening, studying, meditating on the Word? Most people, when they hear this question, hang their heads and admit that they don't do it enough, some even almost not at all. This is one reason we have so little power over sin. We spend so little time with the Word of God. We cannot skip dinner without starting to feel hungry, and in the same way we cannot neglect the Word of God without feeling the lack of it in our spiritual life. The Word of God is essential to keep alive our vocation to holiness and to grow in conformity to Christ. Just as skipping dinner can make us feel weak the next day, the same happens with spiritual food. We need the Word of God in prayer to nourish our soul. People often ask questions about spiritual life as if it were a great mystery. They ask, how can we grow? The answer is simple. How much time do you spend in prayer and with the Word of God? Their response is often, it can't be that simple. I would like to understand the trick or key to spiritual growth. The truth is that you need to spend time listening to your conscience. If we do not learn to listen to the deep voice of the Holy Spirit speaking within us, we will never be spiritual people. How can we apply all this in our daily lives? Starting to dedicate some time every day to listening attentively to the gospel and to prayer is simple? No, it's not simple at all. There will always be a thousand distractions, a thousand commitments, and ten thousand thoughts that will try to distract us from this purpose. The whirlwind of daily life will try to sweep us away from our commitment to pray and hear the gospel with intense force. But if we remain anchored in prayer and the Word of God, the world will not drag us away. As David says, I have kept your word in my heart so as not to sin against you. No one when he's tempted should ever think that he is being tempted by God because God cannot be tempted by evil and does not tempt anyone to evil. Rather, each person is tempted by his own concupiscence which attracts and seduces him. Then concupiscence conceives and generates sin and sin, when consummated, produces spiritual death. This concept is present in the trustworthy words of the Apostle James, who teaches us to recognize that temptation does not come from God. Recognizing the goodness and holiness of God while remaining faithful to His Word is fundamental to spiritual growth. Recognizing God's goodness and trusting that He has something better for each of us is critical. We must not fall into the temptations of the devil, who only offers false and empty joys. God does not want to deprive us of the joy of living, 
On the contrary, he wishes to rescue us from the misery of a life lived in sin and deception. You may ask yourself, why is it so tiring to live fighting against recurring sins? Spiritual warfare is like a continuous battle. However, we must know that God allows temptations for our benefit so that by overcoming them we can receive the crown of victory. We must not be discouraged by falls, but we must always get up again, since the Lord awaits us and is ready to celebrate every time we get up from our fall. You shouldn't be surprised if you fall every day, but you shouldn't give up on getting back up. Remaining steadfast in heart and trusting in God's mercy is essential. God is merciful and rewards our commitment and determination in seeking holiness. Thanks for following the video until the end. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more similar content. Share your point of view on the topic of sin in the comments and enrich the reflection of our community. If this video made you think, we invite you to share it with your friends. See you soon, and take care of yourself.